Jesus is the scepter, he is the throne. Alleluia, he is the triumph, he is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus out of every nation has redeemed us by his blood. Hallelujah, sing to Jesus. Hallelujah, sing to Jesus. He is the center, he is the throne. Hallelujah, he is the triumph, he is the victory alone. Heart the songs of peaceful Zion. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, peace, and joy of the risen Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Uh, today is Ascension Thursday, and uh, we mark the end of Jesus' physical life on earth, and the beginning of the point at which his ministry is now ours, and we either carry on his ministry or not, but he tends to work through the community from this day on. Let all say amen who rejects Satan and all his works and all his empty promises. Amen. Let all say amen who believe in God, loving Father of all people, who has called us to live together to build a world in unity and peace. Amen. amen. Let all say amen who believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who suffered, died, and rose again for us so that we might learn to live for others and find hope in his victory over death. Amen. amen. Let all say amen who believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. amen. This is our faith, the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. amen. Come to the water, come to the water of life. It will never run dry. Come to the water, come to the water of life. It will never run dry. Come to the water, run to the water of life. It will never run dry. Oh, let justice. 
Tempests roll like a river Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and help us rejoice with devoted thanksgiving for the ascension of Jesus, your Son. He is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He answered them, it is not, I for, you to, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. 
but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, they were looking on. He was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside him. They said, men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who's been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples clap your hands, shout to God, shout to God with cries of gladness for the Lord the most high the awesome is the great king over all the earth God mounts his throne to shouts of joy a blare of trumpets for the Lord God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? In accordance with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at the right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, 
not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he puts all things beneath his feet and gave him as head of over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. says the be with you with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you lord jesus said to his disciples go out into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature whoever believes and is baptized will be saved whoever does not believe will be condemned These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after speaking to them, was taken up into heaven to take his seat at the right hand of God. But they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord was working with them. And the word was confirmed through the signs that accompanied their preaching. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a famous Hollywood director by the name of James Cameron who had a a very successful career uh, making action movies. But his dream, his great vision, was to create the ultimate motion picture depicting the sinking of the ocean liner Titanic. He made his magnus opus and released it, I believe, in 1997. And it was, in the words of Hollywood, a blockbuster. It won the Academy Award for Best Picture, and I believe it was the first movie ever to make a billion dollars. It's known for his obsessive attention to detail. He wanted the the sets that he created to be as exact as they possibly could. He he had China made that was a precise replica of the China that was on the Titanic. The carpets and the rugs were, were complete duplicates of what was on the deck of the ship at the time. The, the sconces on the wall, the, the, the fashions that the people were wearing, everything was precisely as it had been on the ship. Somewhere along the line, I watched a, a featurette about the making of the movie. And there was this one particular segment that fascinated me. Um, they were showing how he filmed the sequences showing the, the ship sliding into the ocean. 
So what he did was he built these uh, sets that were replicas of the deck of the ship, and he put them in the ocean on hydraulics. He put actors and extras on it, and what he would do is he would say, action, and the hydraulics would lower the set into the sea so that the ocean water would rush up so that he could, he could capture this idea of, the, of the, the sea consuming the ship itself. So then he'd say, cut. They'd raise up the set. It would drain out. He'd put the actors back on, and he'd shoot it again. But here's what intrigued me. His direction to the actors and the extras was this. He said to all of them, if your birthday is in January or February, you're at level 10 of panic. If your birthday is in March or April, you're at level nine, and so on and so on and so on. See, what he wanted to try to capture is the idea that people, human beings, respond differently to a crisis. And as a priest, I can tell you that that's absolutely true. In my career, I've had the experience of being with many families experiencing a sudden an unexpected crisis. And there are some people that respond to that circumstance with great courage and fortitude and strength. And there are other people who completely fall apart. My guess is if I were to ask each one of you individually, which one are you? All of you would say, oh, I'm, I'm the strong and capable and courageous one. I'm the person who will be um, composed in a crisis. Other people will look to me for guidance and direction. So let's put that to the test, shall we? All of us collectively have been in the midst of an enormous crisis. I can't imagine that anyone here today in January of 2020 could have imagined the year that we have had the shutdown, the isolation, businesses going under, hospitals filled with inadequate supplies, and people dying with no vaccine. And how have you responded to that crisis in this last year? Have you been hopeful? Have you been optimistic? Have you been faith-filled? Have you been patient? Or have you been pessimistic, argumentative, despairing, self-pitying? I ask you these questions, everyone, because today the church is celebrating the Feast of the Ascension. We are celebrating the belief that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and he lived, he died, and at one point in history, he ascended from the earth plane into the heavens. And that upward motion is emblematic of the entire ministry of Jesus. Throughout his entire ministerial life, he is constantly lifting up the human family, lifting up the human condition. He dined with sinners. He forgave their sins. He expelled demons. He healed the sick. He communicated constantly this message that we are the children of God and that God is not an angry patriarch, but rather God is like a, a loving father who is running out to welcome you home. Everything he did, everything he said, communicated the sense of lifting up the human condition. Now we are the modern day disciples of Jesus Christ. And in our charge to emulate him, we need to go out into the world and to lift one another up by being a people of hope, of faith, of patience, of tolerance, of love, of understanding, of generosity. This is the call that each one of us has as we imitate this skyward action of Jesus Christ. It's interesting, um, the actual uh, 
ocean liner, Titanic, when it was um, released, it was identified as unsinkable. The Titanic is unsinkable, they said, and it sunk on its maiden voyage. It hit an iceberg. It knocked a hole in the hull. It was made of iron. And in two hours and 40 minutes, it sunk to the bottom of the sea. But there were people who survived that disaster. And I would be willing to wager that many of those survivors were people of faith and hope and courage. So, which one are you? You know, if Jesus were here, he wouldn't ask that question. The question Jesus would ask is, which one do you want to be? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Father, with your Son returned to you in heaven, we, his people, call out to you. We bring before you our needs and petitions today. We pray that the risen Christ who sustains us might pour out his spirit in all places where there is suffering, uncertainty, and fear, renewing creation with his peace, abundance, and hope. We pray to the Lord. That we might continue in our call to care for the earth and all its creatures. That we might protect all life, celebrate our interconnectedness, and sow more beauty in our world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace for an end to gun violence and war, that peacemakers throughout the world might use their power to lift others, and that the language of love and dialogue might always prevail over the language of division and conflict. We pray to the Lord. That those countries desperate for COVID-19 vaccines might receive an outpouring of charity to help bring healing and security to their people. We pray to the Lord. For our community of Nativity of Our Lady, that we might go forth today, not only touched and transformed by grace in Christ Jesus, but that we might be that loving, forgiving, life-giving presence for others. We pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying. For all those in need of God's healing grace, I invite you, wherever you are this morning, to say their names aloud at this time.
through the great and mysterious power of the Holy Spirit, all those who are ill might be brought to the fullness of health and well-being. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the faithful departed and in a special way for the repose of the souls of Jean Bartlett, Larry Laundry, and Terry Garrity. May they and all who have died rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Father, in trust and faith, we come before you today, laying our needs in your presence in the sure confidence that you will hear us, you will answer us. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Amen. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too, may rise up to the heavenly realms through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascends today to the highest heavens as the angels gaze in wonder. Mediator between God and people, judge of the world, Lord of hosts, he ascends not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before us. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, for you love the human race and always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we're gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've now seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Jesus that's been handed on to us, and the grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we now have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, 
Danny, our bishop, with all other bishops, priests, deacons, religious women, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all that, sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our sisters and brothers who've fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us share now a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but only, only say, say the, the word, word and my soul shall be healed. This morning, if you are a guest in the Catholic Church or if there is some other reason why you will not be receiving Eucharist, we'd like to invite you to receive a blessing. And the way you do that is as we approach you, if you'll just cross your arms in front of you like this, that's a sign for us to bless you in the name of the Father 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For those of you who are receiving communion, just a reminder to please keep your hand as you're waiting in the reception position, and once you have received, to please lower your hand. Almighty and ever-living God, who allows we who are upon earth to celebrate these divine mysteries, grant, we pray, 
that Christian hope may always draw us onward to where our nature is united with you forever and ever. There is a, a process uh, that we use here in the church um, that's based upon um, the, early, the early church, really, um, the rite of Christian initiation for adults. It's for those adults who are interested in the process of, of becoming uh, members of the Catholic Church, receiving what we call the sacraments of initiation, of baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation. Um, it's a process that begins usually in September, and then um, on Easter, at the vigil, we celebrate the sacraments of initiation, and then there is what's called the, the mystagogia after that. It's a fantastic process, and it has really, in many ways, revitalized the life of the Catholic Church. Um, last year, it did not seem uh, possible for us to actually begin an RCIA class because of the nature of, of the process and because of what was happening in the world at that time. Um, however, it is our great hope to start up a class in September of this year. And so I, I put that out there to you for your consideration. If you're someone who has been considering the possibility of, of becoming Catholic, um, this would be a great chance for you. Um, and one of the things you should know is that the there's a series of, of basically um, uh, components that are a part of the process. And the very first one is just called inquiry. So I wouldn't want anyone to think that, well, if I go to that first meeting in September, it means that I've decided I'm going to receive the sacraments. Not necessarily. It's, it's an opportunity for you to come to ask questions and to learn more about our history, our theology, and our tradition, and to see whether or not the Spirit is moving you uh, to celebrate the sacraments of initiation. This process, for those of you who might have been baptized in another tradition, but who are interested in, in coming to complete conversion here in the church. So um, just keep that in mind. That's really something we're hoping to start in September, and we'd love to have uh, a big group of all of you willing to join us on this great journey. I think most of us are aware of the fact that the CDC made some um, recommendations this week in terms of mask wearing and so forth, um, but the the parish of Nativity of Our Lady is really under the Diocese of Monterey, and uh, Bishop Danny, I think, is really waiting for a revising of the um, restrictions coming from the California Department of Public Health. So for right now, we're, we're maintaining things as they have been. Um, as soon as we get some uh, further direction from the bishop and the diocese, then we'll, uh, we'll proceed accordingly. In the meantime, thank you all so much for your patience. Next Sunday is the great feast of Pentecost, the coming down of the Holy Spirit. And as most of you know, um, we have liturgical colors that are identified with particular times in the church year. And so because of the, the sense of fire and the spirit, uh, the color is red. So I just invite you, whether you're coming to Mass on Saturday night or Sunday morning, to, uh, to break out your red clothes and to wear those as you come to celebrate Mass with us on Pentecost. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.